If you mm -hmm. talk about what you do, you blend in with everyone else who does what you do. I'm a dentist. Mm -hmm. I fix teeth. I do crowns. I do bridges. I do this. I do that. So does every other dentist. That's what it is to be a dentist. That's right. When you talk about why you do what you do, you stand out from everyone who does what you do. In order to be able to do that, you have to know what your why is. That's the whole point. And so that's why it's so critical to know your why, your how, and your what, because that's your message. Welcome to another exciting edition of the e-commerce traffic and conversion podcast. I'm DJ Sprague, and I'm here with my co-host, Scott Brandley, and our guest, Gary Sanchez. Hey, Gary, how are you doing today? Doing great, man. I'm excited to be here with you both. It's going to be fun. Yeah, definitely. So I get the honor to introduce you today. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Dr. Gary Sanchez. Um, he's also known as Dr. Y, as and is a renowned international speaker, author, dentist, and inventor. He's uncovered the elusive nine whys and developed the innovative Y operating system, or otherwise called YOS. And he's founded the highly respected Y Institute and crafted a cutting edge discovery tool that enables individuals to uncover their why in just eight minutes, which I just did before this podcast, and it was really cool. So I think we're going to be talking about that a little bit. And then with this unwavering commitment to making a difference, Dr. Sanchez aims to empower 1 billion individuals to discover their personal operating system. His YOS discovery not only reveals one's intrinsic motivation, but also crafts a personal brand message to aid in their journey towards fulfillment. That's a pretty big why. <laughs> it's a pretty big why, and it's not one that a billion people. It's, yeah, it's a great yeah. goal. Where, where are you at now? Do you have any? Yeah, we're. Yeah, we're well, um, yeah, so we we've helped so far about three hundred and sixty five thousand, and that's over the last three years. So it's you know it kind of just it, our goal is to double every year. And if we mm -hmm. double every year within 15 years, we'll be at a billion. And we're on track for that now. Uh, but we are getting more and more people like yourselves that are coming along with us for the ride. Because it's definitely a, a massive goal. Now, our vision is to be the first step in self-awareness. To be the first step in self-awareness. So what that means is there's a lot of great... If you're trying to figure out who you are... So for the listeners, if, you, if you're trying to answer the question, like, who am I? Why do I do what I do? What, what direction should I go? How can I, how should I figure out my passion, my purpose, my direction? There's a lot of tools that are available, right? Myers-Briggs, Colby, Strength Finders, DISC, we go on and on and on. And those are really good, very powerful. We use them. Those though are how you take action and not why you take action. So we have the world's only why discovery tool. The big and, missing piece uh, yeah. by the operating system, right? Yep. That is the that is the foundation of any system is the operating system, the, the basic code in which everything else spins off of. Exactly. So how did you get into this? I mean, this is such a amazing psychological concept. And of course, it really relates to Simon Sinek's famous book and TEDx talk, Why? Uh, well, how did you get into it? What was the <laughs> that got you so ingrained going from dentistry for what, 32 years? Yep. Uh, to really digging deep into this psychological foundational principle of discovering your why OS. And DJ, this is not something I ever set out to do. I didn't wake up one day and said, hey, I think I'm going to figure out this why thing and create a software to help other people do it. That is not how this happened. Uh, I, I like I uh, like you said. I was a dentist. I graduated from USC Dental School in 1988, and the in the um, gurus of that time gave us this message: right, um, build a great product, and people will come. You probably heard that yourself, right? Go out and do the best job you can, and people will naturally and mysteriously find you. And so I spent 20 years doing that, reaching the highest levels you could go to in dentistry, studying with the best mentors, going to the best institutes, building a beautiful practice, buying all the technology, training a 
a great team only to still blend in with everybody else who said, yeah, I'm a dentist too. It used mm-hmm. to drive me crazy. You know, right. somebody right out of school would say, oh yeah, I'm a dentist just like he is. And I'm like, ah, man, not really. And, and, yeah. and so then I became so frustrated that I was either going to quit or I was going to find something better. So I went out and hired a coach, a guy by the name of John Asraf. You've maybe, uh, if you've ever seen the movie, The Secret, you know who he yep. is. Yep. And, and through him, I learned how to use the internet, how to do websites and drip campaigns and SEO. And so I could tell all the world about me. But the only problem was, what was I going to say? Hmm. What am I going to say that separates me from everybody else who does what I do, right? What are, what are your listeners going to say to separate them from everyone else who does what they do? And since I didn't know and I didn't want to sound bad, I just stayed quiet until one day I heard John Asraf interview Simon Sinek. And so once I heard that, I watched his TED Talk probably 20, 30 times. I bought his book and read it, you know, four or five times. And I said, man, that's what I'm missing. I have a great what but I don't know my why. And that's when I called Simon. I said, hey, I need you to help me discover my why. And so he and I spent about eight months together going back through my life looking for clues. He didn't really have a process to do it. Um, and I just kept working with it and working with it. And, and I figured out that my why, uh, like yours, DJ, is to find a better way and then share it. And that's when my life started to make sense to me. I have a lot of patents and products and inventions that are better ways of doing things. So in my practice, we stop talking about what we do, crowns, bridges, fillings, and we started talking about why we do what we do and what we believe, right? We believe that life is better when you have great teeth. In fact, you can't really have a good life if you have bad teeth. And that's when things really started going good for us. And as my practice took off and the right people started showing up, I started getting calls from other dentists that wanted me to help them do what I did. So I went back and figured out what Simon was trying to do, and I made it better. So instead of taking six or eight or 10 months to help someone discover their why, I could sit down with you in about an hour, help you figure out your why, and then build your messaging and marketing and branding. And I did this for thousands of people for free all over the world on stages, on Skype. I'd bring somebody out of the audience on stage with me. I would discover their why in front of the audience and then build their messaging and marketing and branding right there on stage. And as I did this for so many thousands of people, I started to notice patterns and trends and similarities. And I figured out there's only nine different whys. That was the most important thing I discovered because once I knew that, then we had an endpoint. Then I could teach other people to do what I was doing. Then I could get more data. And with that data in 2016, I launched the why discovery that just found your why and you know, I've done more why discoveries than anybody in the world, and I was only about 70% accurate. So 30% of the time I was wrong. The why discovery was 100% accurate. And then in 2021, we launched the YOS or why operating system that finds your why, your how, and your what, and builds your message for you in about eight minutes, which is what both of you took. And so now we're bringing that to people all over the world. And that was a very quick version of how all this happened. But it wasn't something I set out to do. Um, it just kind of evolved into it. And then as it's grown, I've sold my practice. And now for the last three years, I've just solely focused on YOS. And now I have a whole team behind me before it was just me. So that kind of brings us up to speed. It's an amazing story. And really the the concept that you took Simon's uh basically one-off approach, which took months, right? Months of oh, yeah. pressure. Then you got it down to about an hour and now you have it down to eight minutes yeah. and it's the why, how, and what. So you've actually expanded it while reducing it, the whole thing down to eight minutes. So how in the world did you discover those specific questions to get to those specific outcomes within nine whys? You know what? That's a really great question because there's going to be people listening to this podcast that have a process that they use with their clients that they feel is not only super valuable, but maybe they feel like they're the only ones that can do it because that's how I felt for so long. Like, like I'm special, right? Because I've put in the 10,000 hours. I've done all these why, why discoveries. I'm the only one that can help someone figure out their why. And, and I thought that for a little while. 
until one of my friends said, well, you know what, if that's the truth, Gary, then uh, how big of an impact are you going to have in your whole life? And I thought, wow, Mm. it's kind of a little shot to the face. And it was, but it was true. How big of an impact can I have if, if I'm the only one that can do it? And so that's when I mind mapped this whole process. And I started teaching other people to do what I did. But how it came about, I was working with this big group of lawyers in Florida. It's like 50 of them. I I had been told that they they asked me to come speak at this event. And they said, oh, maybe 45 minutes, pull somebody out of the audience, discover their why, show them how this all works. Well, I did the first lawyer. And another, hey, can I go? Hey, I want to go. Hey, I need to know that. 14 hours later, I was still on the stage. (laughs) Taking people out of the audience one at a time. And, Unbelievable. And, and so halfway through that day, w- uh, one of the, this lady lawyer raised her hand and she said, hey, Gary, uh, how many whys are there? And I thought, well, I don't know. I never thought of that. I was just doing it the way I was doing it. And so once I started keeping track, then I figured out there was nine different whys. So here's the important thing that I want to get at. The why is housed in the limbic part of your brain. That's the inner part of your brain, the part of the brain that's responsible for feelings like loyalty and trust. Decision-making happens there, but it doesn't have the capacity for language. So you can't tell somebody why you feel a certain way. You can only tell them that you way. And so the only way that I could get to somebody's why was through stories, listening to story after story after story. And I would inter, I, I could see the pattern within the story because I've done it so many times. And so once I figured out that there were nine different whys, I figured out a different way to get to them without having to listen to stories. And that's the important thing that I want to share with everybody is you have a process that you feel is just your own. Think of another way to get there where it doesn't have to be just you. And that's how I ended up getting to it because I'd I'd heard so many stories. I knew exactly what those people would say. That's where the names of the nine whys came from. And that's where the questions within the YOS discovery came from. So there's over 4,000 possible question options in the YOS discovery that you took. But I used logic-based programming. So you only had to answer about 30 to 35 to get to your why, how, and what. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, that was the process. That, that makes sense. Um, real, last question on this, Gary. Um, I've taken the Myers-Briggs for 30 years. I've probably taken it four or five times over a 30-year period. And basically, it stays pretty consistent, but there are variables, right? There, there are times where I can see, oh, you know, 30 years ago, I was more over here, and now I'm, I'm a little more over here. Uh, Strengths find the same thing. So. Would your why possibly change or adapt or morph over decades? Great question. I don't think so. Well, let's ask you, uh, DJ, have you, so for your listeners, maybe tell every, can we use you as an example? Absolutely. Okay. So let's have you read your simple YOS. This is DJ's message. This is why I would choose DJ. So okay. let's let you go ahead and, and read your simple YOS out loud. All right, here we go. I believe that success happens when we find a better way and are able to share it. How I do that is by seeking depth, breadth, and details. What uh, ultimately I bring is a trusting relationship where others can count on me. So basically it's a better way. It's seeking information, knowledge, breadth, and understanding, and then trust. Yeah. Trust in me. And trust in others. So it's better way, mastery, trust. So if you're listening and you happen to have a pen or pencil, just write down better way uh, for his why, how is mastery, seeking mastery, and is what is trust. So if I were to ask your mom, has DJ always been looking for a better way? What would she say? Yeah, she'd say absolutely. I was <laughs> always innovating, always trying new things, always asking why. And yes. uh, yeah, my wife, the same same thing. I was telling you earlier the story. Every time we go somewhere, and I'm talking about, well, it could be done this way better and that way better. And 
So can't you just enjoy it for what it is and not be looking at how to do it better? <laughs> can't. No. I just do that. So you and I, we have the same why a better way. And, and um, we're always looking for improvement. We're always trying to innovate things. And we're rarely satisfied, right? We're always trying to improve it. It's hard for us to be satisfied. Yeah, that's right. And that's always been your way. And that will always be your way. And so I don't think uh, I don't think it changes. Now, your how and your what might. But we now have a way to test it over time where we didn't have that. My gut tells me they don't, but we'll find out because you'll be able to take it over time. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just curious if you've seen any of that because it does, like you say, it's an OS, it's an operating system. Yep. So if it's an operating system, then it should be pretty foundational, pretty fundamental to really who you were as a child, which then just kind of grew as you as you got older. I think this should be mandatory for every high school kid, for every college kid. Yes. I think for every couple looking to get married. I mean, every relationship, every business, every employee, every potential employee. So I was at a company years ago where you had to take the strengths finder as part of your employment because they want to understand you and they wanted you to understand them. And so everybody in the team would share their strength finder outcomes. I see this as one of those basic, fundamental, mandatory processes to really understand the people you're working with, understand the company, understand your potential spouse, understand your children, um, understand your career path. You know, if you're if you're in high school and looking at maybe going to college, maybe not. Well, who are you? What's your why? What's your what? What's your how? <laughs> I feel like I should have paid you for that because that's exactly the way I feel. And you, you know, I don't even meet with anybody unless I know their YOS. I don't get on a phone call or a, a Zoom call or meet with them in person because. What are we going to talk about? I mean, I won't even know where to start, but now it, it makes it so much easier. So here's what typically happens. So for the listeners, when you have, let's just say, um, well, let's go over to Scott because we haven't let we haven't talked about Scott for a minute. But let's say you you're looking at the screen right now and you see Scott waiting to talk to you on a Zoom call. What we typically do is look in front. Or look at his hairstyle or his beard or what he's wearing or what he's sitting in or his posture. And we create a narrative around what we think we see. And then that, that's right. who they become to us right? because that's all we know. And so then what, what happens is we're typically not right, but we treat them based on what we think they are. And this could even be your spouse. This could be your kids. This could be people you work with. We're just using Scott right now as an example. But Scott, can we, would you mind saying your simple YOS out loud? Yeah, sure. Uh, my why is that I believe that success happens when we think outside the box. <laughs> my how is that I do that by finding better ways and sharing them. And then my what is ultimately is, is a clear solution. I bring a clear solution. Yeah. So he thinks outside the box, finds better ways, and brings them to us in a clear system, a clear process that we can actually do something with it that's understandable. But I would have no idea looking at you that that's the way that you think. And so True. what it does for me is it gives me the language that you speak. If I had an idea that I wanted to propose to Scott, I better show them how it's different and outside the box. I better show them how it's better than what we're currently doing. And I better bring it to him in a clear, systematic way. Or, he's, or how are you going to feel about it? I'll have to process it. It'll <laughs> yeah. take time. To but find it, those, it'll take time for me to do that on my own, to figure it out. But if I said, Scott, let me show you how this is different than what you're currently doing it's outside the box. Nobody's doing this. Let me show you how it's better than what you're currently doing. And let me show you how this is clear and easy to implement. It's doable. Now, how would you feel about it? I would be a lot more excited about it because I would understand the process immediately versus having to figure it out myself. 
That is the language that you speak. Those are the words you need to hear in order to make a decision. That is Scott's decision-making process. And when you know that about somebody that you're talking with, then you know the language and the words that you have to use, or they're not going to feel heard. They're not going to feel understood. They're going to say, well, you don't understand me. You don't get me. We, we don't understand each other, but I can cut through all that very, very fast and get down to like, what are we really talking about here? Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. And the same Pretty thing. Cool. Yeah. The same thing with DJ. I better show them how it's better than what we're currently doing. I better show them how there's deep, there's meaning to it. There's nuances to it. And I better show them how it's going to create more trust, better relationships. Or he's not going to want it. Does that feel right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So in it, fact, uh, we have a whole business around building trust. We wrote a book, Scott and I, uh, Reputation King, which is all about building online trust and trust on your website. And we both believe in that concept because trust is what creates relationships, engagement, and conversions. Because people don't trust your website, trust your product. They're certainly not going to buy from you. Yeah, exactly. And and if you know who you're talking to, you can skip so much of the stuff that you have to go through in order to try to figure out who you are talking to. You can just get right down to the point. And it works amazingly well in sales. It make it works amazingly well in relationships like you were talking about, DJ, you know, husband and wife. You, like your wife, like you said, your wife said, Well, DJ, why are you always wanting to make something better? Or why can't you just be satisfied with the way it is? Well, you're never gonna stop that. Right. And it's a gift. One of the things we talk about is a little bit of chocolate's good, too much chocolate, not so good, right? Unless you're a chocoholic. <laughs> but in your case, a little bit of better way is good. Too much better way, not so good, right? Y there's probably nothing that I could bring you that you couldn't make better. Is that a true statement? That's what I always strive to. Find a way to make it better. But if everything I said to you and everything I brought to you, you made better, how do you think that would make me feel? Hmm. Maybe um, uneasy, inadequate. Yep. Wondering, when does this stop? <laughs> yep. And yeah. how would I feel about you? Ah, uh, well, maybe... Um, Uncomfortable around. Yeah. Someone wants to make it better all the time. But it, but that's the whole point. All you need to do now is figure out what's the right amount, and you probably already have, but what's the right amount of better way that you get to live to fully be yourself, but not overrun the people around you. Right. And I'm sure you've already done that, figured that out for yourself um, okay. because you still have people around you, or you wouldn't if you if you if you hadn't figured it out, right? Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. Back off. Yeah, we have to back off. Me too. I one of the things in a so now if we're looking at a business setting, let's say um you um DJ were my boss and I brought you something to here I, I my, here's my finished product, whatever it is, and then you take a look at it and say, Well, you know, you could have made this better or this better, or how about if we did this better? It would, it would be a little disheartening. So, and that happens to me in my own company. So what we learned is if when people bring me things, they always say, here's my draft. Mm. Here's yeah. my draft because no matter if they think it's finished or not, it's always a draft to us. So right. here's my latest draft. What do you think? Now you're free to better weigh it without hurting their feelings. Right. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good nuance. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Hey, it's Gary, do you think that your why is attached to emotion? Well, 
That's a good question. You know, it's funny. I, I'll often get this this a question like that that says, um, "Is your why God given or is it environmental?" So I want you to both imagine this because DJ, I know you just spoke at a big event. Scott, were you? And I'm not sure if you spoke at the I same was, event. I didn't you speak, were, but I was there. Yeah, you were there. Okay, but DJ was on stage. So DJ, I want you to imagine there's a thousand people in the audience, and somebody asks you that question. And no matter what you say, you're going to upset half of the audience. Answer that question. Right? Answer that question. In terms of, is it emotional? Is it God-given or is it environmental? Or environmental. Okay. Um, I'm going to say it's probably a combination because you do have God-given talent, skills, um, abilities, uh, unique personalities, et cetera. Everybody has God-given skills. Uh, but environmental also has an impact, especially in your you know, younger years. Up to age seven, I think, is kind of the, the key years that your environment can either enhance or squelch your God-given skills, abilities, personality, talents, et cetera. And, and that would probably be a great answer. The way I answer it is, I just say yes, because I have no idea. I mean, I could tell you what I think, but I have no way to prove it. And it doesn't matter. The point isn't whether where it came from. The point is, what is it so that you can use it? And so I learned a long ago, if no matter what I answer, I upset somebody. So I don't answer it. I just say yes. 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 Doesn't matter. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter where it came from. Yeah. All that is matters what is, is what is it. Yeah. What is it? Yeah. So I can use it. You, you can use it in your life. Yeah. And then, understand. And, and that's really, Don't worry about it. Yeah. And so, you know, Simon Sinek, one of the one of the great things about what he's done is is a hundred million people have watched that TED talk now. hundred million. And we kind of kid, 100 million people have have seen the TED Talk, but maybe 100 people were ever able to figure out what their why is. So that leaves about 99,999, whatever that number is, people still looking for it. And Simon's one of many people that talk about it. Tony Robbins talks about it. Michael Hyatt talks about it. You know, you go on and on and on. Everybody tells you you got to know your why. But it doesn't really do you much good to have someone tell you, yeah, you got to know your why without a way to actually do it. Yeah. And so, so what's really cool is now that part of it is going to be done for you. All you've got to do is take the action to discover your why, how, and what, and then go activate it in your life. Go live it. So if you're somebody that's listening and you are trying to figure out your purpose or your passion or your direction, what you ought to do with your life, where you should spend your time. If what you choose to do is in line with your why, your how, and your what, you will love what you do. You will have passion for what you do. And passion is the fuel that gives you the energy to pursue your dreams. Without passion, you'll give up. With passion, yeah. you'll persevere. If you can't live your why, then, I mean, as, as the fundamental, OS, right? Then you're always trying to be something you're not. It's Halloween. Yeah. Right. You, you, you can say, well, I want to be like so-and-so. So you put on that costume and it's fun at first, exciting at first, but think about Halloween at that day, right? You put your costume on, it's fun. But by the end of the day, you can't wait to get it off. Yeah. You're done. And that's how people, a lot of people live their life because they don't know and they don't know how to figure out and they don't know what the first step is to figure out who they are. Yeah. So if there's one message for today, it's really make a decision to figure out who you are, whether it's with the YOS or with coaching or with whatever method you want to use, make that decision to figure yourself out. Because that's when life becomes so much more meaningful. So something I didn't tell you guys, um, about three and a half years ago, 
I went to this event in Santa Fe called Zazobra. Zazobra is kind of like a Burning Man type thing, but it's just one night. It's not like days of drugs or anything like that. It's a, it's kind of, you burn, they burn this big thing and that signifies the end of the year and you're on to, you know, all the bad th- decisions you made and now you're on to the new ones. So it was for a buddy's 45th birthday party. So we kind of ate and drank a little bit too much, wake up the next day with a headache, uh, take a couple Advil, go back to bed. One of the Advil didn't dissolve and it lodged into my GI tract and it burnt a hole mm. right where there was an artery. And so I started bleeding internally and I, and I didn't know it. And I get back to Albuquerque, which is like an hour away. Actually went and worked out, got home, and I just wasn't feeling good. And then I started throwing up blood, and blood starts coming out everywhere. And I end up going to the ER, and they made me wait 11 hours in the ER. By the time they admitted me, my blood pressure was 60 over 30, and I'd lost half my blood. And I was not in a private room because it was a very busy weekend. So I get up to go to the restroom, and I lock the door behind me. And then I pass out, and I hit my head on the sink, and wake up later on. And I don't know how long I was out, but there was blood everywhere. And so I pushed the door open, passed out again. Next thing I know, I wake up in a, on top of a bed, they'd cut all my clothes off. I had the two pads on, they, you know, revived me off to surgery to try to stop the bleeding. They couldn't get to it. So they decide to wait. They do a CAT scan. And if you've ever had a CAT scan, you know, they pop all the dye in your arm. Well, when they do that, they blow out my arm and my arm starts filling up with blood clots that are growing into my lungs. And so the doctor walks in and says, you know, we've got to stop those blood clots because if they get into your lungs, you're going to die. But if we try to stop the blood clots, we can't get to the bleed. So you're going to die. And I said, well, that's not a really, what are we going to do? He said, I don't know. So luckily my phone rang right then. And it was a buddy of mine that's a cardiologist at the hospital. And he said, hey, Gary, I didn't even know you were here, but I don't like what they're going to do. So I'm going to take over. And so I was in the ICU for nine days. A lot of crazy stuff happened in there. Obviously, I survived because I'm here. They did a, I had to go to bed one night with an IV of heparin in to stop the b- blood clots and hope that I didn't bleed. And I didn't. So they were able to solve it that way. Um, but when I got back to my practice, one of my patients who's in his mid-80s took me aside and he said, hey, Gary, you know, you got a second chance on life. And he said, when you get to be my age and you look back on your time here, are you going to be glad that you stayed a dentist or are you going to wish that you'd taken this why thing to the world? I said, I'm going to wish that I'd taken this why thing to the world. And he said, well, then you know what you need to do. And so that's when I sold my practice. I walked away. If you remember, my practice was really doing well then. And, uh, you know, I was working three days a week, four day weekends every week, had to make a ton of money. Everything was going great. And I just walked away from that because this is what I should be doing. This is your life. Yes. And (laughs) so does discovering your YOS make your life easier? It can. And most times it does. But it can also make it more challenging and more fulfilling. And so Mm -hmm. what does a dentist know about bringing software to the world? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So have I made a lot of mistakes? Yes. But do I have passion and energy and love for what I'm doing? Yes. And this is what we're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Passion is the fuel. If you don't have passion, then all the skills in the world doesn't matter. If you don't have a passion behind it, and the why is the passion fuel. Yes. Well, I had a light bulb go off um, when you were talking about people taking this to decide their why, you know, when they go into a job, because if it creates congruency in your life, I think I love what I do every day because what, what I found out taking your test is exactly who I already know I am, but most people don't know that. And so I, I love that. What I do every day is that why that I took on the test. Right. But a lot of people don't know their why. And so they, They go into maybe fields or take jobs that they hate because it's not incongruent. It's not congruent with their why. You got it. When you can say it, that's when you know it. So a lot of people, a lot of your listeners might even say, 
well, I think I kind of sort of maybe think I know what it is. Or I'm kind of sure what it is, but I'm not actually sure. Well, how valuable is that? Mm -hmm. If you can't say it, then you don't know it. And that's the key. Even if you feel like you know it, verify it. Just verify it. Just like what you did right there, Scott, you verified it. You know, I, I'm pretty sure this is what it is, but now I'm Dan, now I'm very sure what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That there's a big difference between kind of sort of thinking maybe you know it, and now I got it. Yeah. And when you have it, decision making becomes so much easier. So we were talking about this before we got on the on the podcast. Um, because you know, Scott. I, we were talking about putting you in a uh, uh, Scott shows up at my my business and he fills out a, a re, an application and he puts on his application. I, I'm good with numbers, but she probably is. He's and so we said, oh, wonderful. We have our new bookkeeper here. So I said, Scott, how's that going to work for you? It's not. <laughs> it's going to it's going to be a train wreck. <laughs> if I want creative bookkeeping. We go to Scott. No. Well, maybe if it's creative, but yeah. then then we're getting into the illegal uh, world of exactly. finance. <laughs> Scott doesn't want to do it the same as everybody else. He doesn't want to follow the rules. He doesn't want to draw inside the lines. He doesn't want to follow the recipe. So how good would that be for someone that's in charge of your money? Not so good right. because they got to do it their own way. So it really allows you to know before you go into a job or a career or a path. So I had I have two daughters. One daughter went through high school and college not knowing her why, because I hadn't figured it out yet. And the other one went through high school and college knowing her why. And their paths were so different. One took six years to get through college, had took a year off, floundered, couldn't figure out her major very, you know, struggle. The other one, bam, right to what she wanted to do, right to her career path. She's killing it. And so it really makes a difference. Clarity, confidence, certainty. Yeah. That's amazing. That's what I was getting back at earlier, right? Every high school kid, every college kid should take this. And there's an example of why. Um, And that's definitely a pun, but okay. So let's talk about business for a second. Yeah. Simon did a great job in his first TEDx talk where he introduced the why. And the example was Apple, right? And that was a great example that everybody could understand. They get their head around. They got it. Um, how can your process be used and executed successfully for an average e-commerce business to understand their why, message their why, and grow their business to be not only more successful financially, but to be more rewarding emotionally and and psychologically and personally and make it something that, wow, this is, this is the right fit for me. This business, I can message it to the right audience and they get it just like Simon did with Apple. I think that's a, a great segue into how do we now, you know, monetize this, if you will, for a business application. Yeah, that great question. And, and, and there's multiple levels to that. And, you know, we could go back to that uh, scenario of Apple and Steve Jobs and dive in a lot deeper now that we know Steve Jobs, why, how and what, you know, his why, by the way, is to challenge the status quo, like Scott, how he does that is by finding better ways, like Scott, ultimately, what he brings are simple solutions. So he's challenge better way simplify mm-hmm. which is exactly what apple is in everything they do they challenge the status quo find a better way and then simplify it so if you remember what was the phone before the uh, the before this phone the iphone with all the buttons on it right yeah the blackberry how, yeah. how many buttons on a blackberry a lot a whole keyboard yeah. <laughs> so if all he was going to do is make a better BlackBerry, he would make a lot plus two. Instead, he challenged what it is to be a phone, mm-hmm. thought outside the box, found a better way using glass, simplified it to where a three-year-old and a 93-year-old can use it with just their finger. Yeah. 
And what's Apple's tagline, right? Think different. Where did that come from? Steve Jobs, why? So if you're a business owner and you're listening to this now and you're the visionary for your business, your business why, how, and what is your why, how, and what, just like it was for Steve Jobs, just like it is for Herb Kelleher at Southwest Airlines when he was there, just like it is for Richard Branson. We could go on and on and on. The why, how, and what of your business is the visionaries why, how, and what. But you need to know what it is because your messaging, your marketing, your branding, your differentiator, helping people understand why they should choose you over everyone else who does what you do comes from that why, how, and what. And that's when it's authentic. And that's when it's real. That's when it's useful. That's when people will say it when it's real. Not something a marketing team came up with, but when it's real, that comes from the visionary. And then from there, if you build your team based on their why, how, and what, if you put the right people on the bus and in the right seat and you build it based on their YOS and how you do that is by creating a matrix where you know who you have, what they do, what's their why, how, and what, and you could quickly see if they're in the right seat. And when you bring on people, you put them in the seat where they're going to love what they do. That's how you build an inspired organization. Yeah. Does that make sense? Completely. Mm -hmm. It goes back to um, Jim Collins. Yes. And getting the right people on the bus because they have the right why that aligns with the brand. And then you figure out the best seat to put them in so they can live their why, how, and what to their maximum potential. Um, so would you give us an example of how you did this in your dental practice? How you took your why and went from being another dentist with another professional degree to creating a very successful, highly leveraged growth practice that was unusual in the space? I wish I could play for you a radio spot. Can you hear something? Mm-hmm. At Sanchez Dental Associates, we believe that life is better with great teeth. We also know that there are so many people that are living below their potential. They are living a life of quiet desperation because of their teeth. They're embarrassed or they're in pain. They don't like to smile. They don't like to be social. They really aren't living. This usually happens because of fear, and it doesn't have to be that way. So our vision is to give these people their lives back. The way we do this is by providing a safe, pain-free experience that alleviates their stress and allows them to get the smile they've always wanted so they can be who they were meant to be. And that's what we do. I'm Dr. Gary Sanchez. If this sounds like your story, then give us a call at 268-2741 or visit us on the web at SanchezDental.com. So if we were like a typical dental practice, our radio spot would talk all about what we do. Crowns, bridges, fillings, complete gum care, latest technology, beautiful practice, come see us, new patient exam, 19 bucks. But in that radio spot, I hope you could hear the difference. Yeah, It was all about why we do what we do. That's right. No, I love that because what you're doing is you are bringing out the dream, right? Live your potential. We all know, and, and all the studies say that, you know, if you don't have healthy teeth and you have a short lifespan, you're unhealthier, you have pain, etc. So live your dream, live your potential, and, and here's the magic, remove the fear. Because yeah. people have fear of dentistry. They have fear of, you know, the pain and the, yeah. and the misery. And a lot of people, as you know, because you've been a dentist for 32 years, are afraid to death of the dentist and needles and anything to do with with serious dentistry work. So by addressing the fear and the dream at the same time, I think that's where you get that magic sauce. If you Mm -hmm. talk about what you do, you blend in with everyone else who does what you do. I'm a dentist. Mm -hmm. I fix teeth. I do crowns. I do bridges. I do this. I do that. So does every other dentist. That's what it is to be a dentist. That's right. When you talk about why you do what you do, you stand out from everyone who does what you do. Mm-hmm. In order to be able to do that, you have to know what your why is. 
That's the whole point. And so that's why it's so critical to know your why, your how, and your what, because that's your message. That was what you just heard was an example of, of the why, the how, and the what of our practice. And it came from our my why. And so that's the same thing with that every business can do. If you're in e-commerce, why should I choose you? Because you're going to give me a little bit more percentage off for now? Or you're going to give me whatever it is you're going to give me for now? It, it could change. So, you know, why should you come see me? Well, I have the latest technology. Well, until the guy down the road gets the latest technology. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a beautiful practice until the lady down the road has an even prettier one. Well, I have more degrees until the other person has more degrees than you do. It's not yeah. why, right? Focus on your why and you stand out. What you believe. And that's the key. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Yeah. That's a great, great I've never heard an ad like that before. So that it it connected with with me right on a different level than uh, than a typical ad would. Yeah. Yep. Really interesting. Yeah. It's, At the it's very least, I'm going to say I'm going to call that that Dennis to figure out how they do that. How are they going to transform? Because what you did is a transformational message. How are you yeah. going to transform me from where I am? To where I want to be, and I could be, and should be, if I had perfect dental health and a great smile and the confidence that goes with it. Exactly, and that all comes from knowing your why, how, and what, because the message will be authentic to the way you, why someone should choose you. So, in your case, um, DJ. It would be very similar. You know, life is better when you have great teeth. How we're going to do that is we're going to dive in deep and we're going to see exactly what's causing this. We're going to look for the nuances, the little things that will make the big difference for you. And ultimately, I'm going to be that trusted source. I'm going to be the one that you can count on. I'm going to be the one that's going to grab your hand and guide you to where you're trying to go. And that's what your message would be all about. And Scott's would be different about thinking bigger. You could have a bigger life. You could enjoy more things. You could push the limits. And how we're going to do that is by, I'm always going to be looking for better ways. And I'm going to bring those better ways to you. But what we're going to do is going to be clearly laid out so that you know you can accomplish it. So the messaging would be based on your why, how, and what. So that it's real to why someone should choose you, each of you, if you were separate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's so, interesting, Gary, is great. in our world, to verbalize what our both of our whys are, we've come up with the word strategy. Like we we focus on strategy in our company to help you, you know. Um, to help st- you stand out because that's we, we couldn't think of you know what the common thing was between both of our whys and so that's the word we came up with but it does align with what we with both of our whys mm-hmm. in certain yeah. ways yeah so one of the things to think about is successful businesses have one visionary you can't have two vision you can't have two people steering the ship So it doesn't mean one person is more important than the other. It just means one person is actually the visionary. So Steve Jobs had Steve Wozniak, the why guy, the how guy, both super important. Apple would have never got there without both of them. But one of them is the why guy and one's the how guy. So uh, you have to figure out who's steering the ship. Where does the buck actually, uh, where does the buck stop, right? If, if If a decision has to be made, Somebody has to be the person to make that decision or mm-hmm. you could spin. So what you, what companies need to do is figure out who's the visionary, who's the leader. That becomes the why, how, and what of that company or else it'll feel off for both. Mm-hmm. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, completely. So ultimately, you have one person driving the car, the ship, or the whatever you want to call it. And then yeah. that's where the YOS comes from. And the rest of the team is the how to make that happen. Right. Yeah. If the company doesn't have a clear why, 
and where they're going, then the how and the what becomes impossible. Because Fuzzy, what are you really delivering, right? You and, got it. And how are you delivering it? If you don't even know what the why is, the vision, and where you're going as an organization. Yep. You've got to know the destination. You're exactly right. And we see it over and over and over. Uh, I was working with this law firm here in town, kind of the biggest law firm in, in Albuquerque, Whitener Law Firm. And the owner, Russ Whitener, was a patient of mine. He actually has your why, Scott. And so the way they did their law firm was, this was the first law firm to start doing all the crazy ads, right? You know, the car smashing and the ripping of the checks and all that stuff. He was definitely an outside the box thinker. He was way before his time, but he created this thing that everybody hated at first. And now it's kind of what a lot of lawyers do now. But he passes away. And the two junior lawyers that now become the two partners of the law firm brought me in and said, hey, we don't, we don't know what to do here without Russ. And I said, all right, well, you got two choices. You can either keep Russ's why, how and what alive and you become the how to do that. Or one of you becomes the leader and you take it in that direction. And they decided they wanted to keep Russ's why, how, and what alive. In fact, they kept everything the same. A lot of people didn't even know he passed away for many years because mm. it was still keeping the uh, thinking outside the box, pushing the limits, doing it differently uh, alive. And they loved it. And yeah. just recently, in the last six months, has one of them stepped forward and said, okay, we're going to go in a little bit different direction. So now that the y, that person's YOS is the direction they're going. We see this with sports teams. We see, I mean, just in every kind of business, got to have that clarity. Yeah. For the team well, to it me of, Back to Apple, when Steve Jobs left, not by yeah. his own decision, the company tanked because they wanted to be more like uh, a you know, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft operating system and they license their operating system to other manufacturers and they completely lost their why. They completely lost their personality and they were about dead until Steve came back <laughs> and brought the why back and stopped the licensing agreements and brought all the manufacturing and the technology back under their roof. And they still operate that way today, but they were about gone. Yep. which is fascinating because they thought they're going to get more market share by operating like Microsoft, but that wasn't what made them what they were. Yes. Yeah, right on. And, and that's why it's just so critical to know. And, and this kind of what we were talking about before is this used to be the hardest part, figuring out what the heck is my why mm -hmm. people have spent Years. Some people never figure theirs out. You know, Mark Twain says two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. Well, a lot of people go through their whole life and never figure it out. Now it's done for you. All you got to do is spend eight minutes discovering your why, your how, and your what, and getting your message for you. It's already done. And now you can go live it. You could activate it. You can make decisions based on it. So many things become easier if you know it. And so once you go discover, you'll know what we're talking about. That's well, cool. make it part of your branding, your messaging. Yes. Because if people don't know it, they can't act on it. And back to Steve Jobs, think different. That was his whole why, is think yeah. different, challenge the status quo, don't be an IBM, don't be a Compaq, don't be a Microsoft. but actually be a manufacturer of the operating system and the hardware, software and hardware, and make it simple, make it unique, make it a piece of art, make it inviting to use, not just a utilitarian product. Um, they really created a, a true brand. Nike, right? Just do it. That's their why. And, and Nike is a brand. Reebok is a shoe. And that's a, that's a big distinction between creating a brand with a Y versus a product with a name. Perfect. Totally agree with you. But if there's people that want to know um, how to find their YOS, really just, you know, 
go to the website. It's right there for you. That's all they really got to do. Go to whyinstitute.com and it'll be right there for them so that they can then do what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, that's I would imagine that's, that's, your, that's the million dollar question, right? <laughs> that we ask at the end of our... We always like to end with a, with a million dollar question, Gary. I got a, I got my million dollars sitting right here. <laughs> there nice. it is. There it is. Love it. So what is the one thing that you'd recommend yeah. a business do that would create the biggest impact as quickly as possible? What's that? What's that million dollar idea, that million dollar strategy, that million dollar thing that you would right now recommend a business do? Make sure the visionary is crystal clear on their why, how, and what, because everything comes from that. Clarity, confidence, certainty, direction, passion, purpose, all of that will come when they are clear on their why, their how, and their what, so that you can stand out in the marketplace, so that the right people will find you. The better able you are to articulate what it is you believe, the more you will attract those people that believe what you believe. I was not the dentist for everybody. I was the dentist for the ones that heard that radio spot and said, that is me. That you get me. Same thing will happen for each one of you. Figure it out, whether it's using my software or not. And then use it in your messaging, marketing, and branding so that you talk about your why and not your what. So you stand out instead of blending in. So the right people find you instead of don't know where to find you. And that's when your business takes off with the right people. Those that value, appreciate you, will refer to you, will talk about you, will love doing business with you. And that's worth way more than a million. And my, and my guess is, Gary, that you weren't the cheapest dentist in town. No. Nope. My guess is you didn't compete on price, but you competed nope. on this is what makes me different. And this is why you're here. Yep. If you're looking for this, I'm the right person for you. If you're looking to think outside the box and do it differently, you, you've got Scott. If you're looking for a better way, you've got DJ. If you're looking to think inside the box, Scott's not the one for you. It's going to be miserable. Could he work with you? Yeah. It's going to be miserable for both of you, right? <laughs> if you're not looking for a better way, don't go to DJ because that's how he thinks. If you are looking for a better way and you want to continually improve and innovate and do better, DJ's your guy. It just puts the right people with the right people. Yeah. And then it becomes yeah. a great scenario. <laughs> And you're never the right person for everyone. And that's what people have to realize is that when you try to be everything to everyone, you cannot possibly differentiate. You cannot possibly charge a premium and you can't possibly attract the right people to your business because your message is so watered down and generic that it doesn't even stand out anymore. You speak in my language. <laughs> I'm excited to get my family to try this because I, I I would love to see what their why is. I yeah. think it could really help them, especially my kids. I mean, I've got my kids are between 14 and 23. Perfect. And so they're just trying to figure out who they are. I I'm 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 excited to get them to try this and see what their why is and how that could help them in their careers and in their life. And your ability to help them, <laughs> mentor them, steer them be the voice for them goes up dramatically because you'll understand what you're looking at versus mm -hmm. the narrative that we create about what we think we see. Right. Their actions, you know, that don't make any sense now will start to make sense. Why are you asking me so many questions? Why are you always asking me questions? Or why are you this? Or why are you that? Well, now you'll understand what's happening and then you can help guide them in the right direction. So that they love what they do. They love the path they chose. And then you'll, I think you're going to find it fascinating. This is typically what happens when somebody discovers their YOS is they'll say, I got to have this for my team or I got to have this for my family. Mm -hmm. And that's what kind of always happens because you see it and you're like, dang, I wish I could share this with everybody. I wish everyone saw this.
which right. was kind of my story, right? If there wasn't a better way. So DJ, you know, I just felt like I kept sharing a better way. I kept sharing a better way for you to know you, a better way for you to know you, a better way. And it was an, almost like an addiction. Mm-hmm. Anybody that would let me, I would help them figure out what their why is. So if you're sitting next to me on an airplane, you're going to get your why discovered. If you're sitting, <laughs> in, my, you're sitting in my chair getting numb, you're going to get your why discovered. Or so, at, uh, at the Cialdini conference, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you, you kind of saw the effect of it with uh, the other gentleman that was there, uh, Parvis, Parsif, the uh, Parvis. Yeah. Pardon me. It's your his book is on your desk, DJ. The oh, Joe Polish? No, 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 not Joe. The dentist, the, the other dentist oh, guy, right? Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, Parsif. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's cool. So Gary, how can we help you uh in your in your mission to reach a billion people? What um if somebody wants to take your why test, where do they go and what 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 kind of offer do you have for them? Yeah, so if you just go to whyinstitute.com, if I and and I the, we have a why discovery and a why OS. The why finds just your why, the why OS finds your why, how, and what, and does your message for you. I would do the why OS. It's only $97. It'll solve so many problems for you. It's not expensive, but it's invaluable. And it will really help you gain clarity. And all I ask is just share it, spread it. If it helped you, you know, take somebody else by the hand and say, hey, go discover your why OS and let's talk about this. Let's help each other based on the way we think so we can get to the right place that fits us. And that's really, really it. If there's somebody, if they're business owners, you know, we have hundreds of coaches now. If you're a coach and you want to apply this to your business, to your coaching practice, we have a way for you to do that. If you're a business and you want to bring it into your company, uh, there's a way to do that. So feel free to reach out. Um, my personal email is gary at whyinstitute.com. Uh, just let me know that you you heard it from Scott and uh, DJ, and I'd love to jump on a call with you and see how we can best help you. And you have a special offer, Podcast 50? Podcast 50, and they'll get it at half price. Yep. So okay. just put in Podcast 50, you'll get it at half price. So it's really only half a 97, whatever that is. Perfect. Right. That's great. Well, and we'll share that in the show notes. Yes. Thank you guys for having me today. Thank you. It's been really for for coming on. This has been very enlightening. um, And I think very helpful for me as personally. And uh, yeah, anyone watching, go check it out. Go, go get your, your why test done and see what it can do for you and your business and your life. Yeah, as you can say, it's really the core of your marketing message, right? If you differentiate and stand out and create clarity, yep. uh, you've got to have your why message. Get clear, stand out, play bigger. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. Take care.